They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. I have found in the work in a professional environment, the option in general, whether it be on your social media bio, your email signature, whatever, like normal, like sharing your pronouns, like is not for cis people. Like, and I don't mean it in the, but not in the sense that cis people shouldn't do it. Cis people absolutely should, because you should never assume somebody's like gender identity. Like people look at me and automatically think I'm a she, her when I absolutely am not. So by sharing your pronouns, it makes it you or she is or whoever is making it a safe space for people who might not necessarily feel comfortable sharing their pronouns to share their pronouns. Mm. Because I don't know, there are a lot of trans people I have spoken to that like have gotten mad at cis people for putting their pronouns in their bio, but like, it's not, it's to normalize that to normalize, not assuming somebody's gender because your mom, like I've never met your mom, but like, obviously like you said yourself and your mom is like in her early sixties. So I'm assuming she looks very cis lady. Like very, you know, she got short hair, but that was, that was a style back then. Yeah. So even if she looks like hella cis lady, she might not necessarily use she, her pronouns. So even though it might seem to her like it's obvious that she uses she, her pronouns, mm-hmm. it is not always obvious. Right. But can you understand, like, if someone, if someone asked me what my pronouns were, I, I, I would be like, well, he, him, but like, but like, why, why would you think otherwise? Like, it's, oh, could you, could you, could you understand why someone would be offended if they're cis and they're very clearly cis, someone would be offended why someone asked them their pronouns? <laughs> Because there are people like I'm one of these people, my partner is one of these people that right. like we look like cis people. Like I have no intention of I don't plan on getting top surgery, which for those listening who don't know, that would be me having a double mastectomy and having my breasts removed. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want that. I don't want to go into uh, testosterone. Like that's not part of my journey. And it's just, it is, you can't assume like if people that might look clearly look cis might not be cis. Right. So people ask, like, it's not to, to be like asking like, Oh, are you trans? It's to make sure that everybody feels respected and validated because some people that look really cis might, for whatever reason, might not be able to look in the present in the gender they feel comfortable with. Like, right. well, like say like hypothetically, like you are a trans woman, right? Right. And you, you like you, she, her pronouns, but like you for what either aren't safe to physically transition, you can't afford it. You're not sure if that's in your journey because everybody's transition is different. Right. Like it's a long process. Er- yeah. And some people like choose to get like, like surgeries and hor- take hormones and make changes to their body that other people don't. And each journey, each way of expressing your gender is totally valid. So by asking somebody who might to the untrained eye look, really cis might not be right that makes sense so I, I i it does make sense but we have a society right that's been around forever that the, this this the trans people are not new gender identity is not new identifying as non-binary is not new and the idea of a gender as a as a, as a fluid system is not new but the pronouns in using them and asking them are new that is a new thing. And I right. feel, I think in the next five to 10 years, it will definitely be normalized. I, I think over time, it'll be more and more or normalized for sure. But could you understand why, like, for example, if you are a trans woman or a man, et cetera, isn't the burden, for lack of a better word, on you to let someone know what your pronouns are because of a system that's been in place for? ever this being so new it depends on the person some people don't feel comfortable or safe sharing their pronouns so like if i walked up say i went to a mad republican mad cis mad straight conservative trans hating right. event yeah you so wouldn't like, you wouldn't you wouldn't say hey i'm k my pronouns are they them yeah yeah you so, generally feel unsafe of course yes so by having it in like say professional spaces, like in zoom meetings or even on podcasts, like, which is I've, I have not done my due diligence on this. And like, I like the idea of introducing pronouns and stuff at the beginning of podcasts. I forgot to do it today. So that's why I did it in the middle of the fucking show. 
But that gives people the the agency to decide, do I want to share my actual pronouns? Do I want to abstain? Like it gives people an option. Like, right. I don't believe pronoun sharing should be mandatory because some people just aren't comfortable. Right. But I don't think that asking somebody like, oh, what are your pronouns is offensive. Like cis, like a lot of cis people that might feel that way, that definitely like scream some internalized transphobia a little bit because of people being afraid that they're being perceived as a trans person. There's a whole, I don't know, there's a whole lot of ugliness and internalized transphobia in our society mm. that we got to like work on. Mm. I see the gears spinning. No, they are, they are <laughs> spinning. No, because that's why I love talking to you, Cameron, because that's something I never thought of. Um, the idea of like, you know, you're assuming, um, say, say that point again, hang on. Meg, you're just spinning. Say that point again, you just made one more time. about Which point? About I made a the lot of them. In, in, internalized about, a, like, I'm, I'm offended someone asked me my pronouns because it's assuming that you think I'm trans. Yes. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cis people will be like, why the fuck would you ask me my pronouns? I'm clearly a woman. Right. Well, not everybody that might look what society expects women to look like might not feel that way. You know, I honestly, I look like a punk rock lesbian most of the time. It's interesting. What, what it makes me think of, like you think of like decades ago, right? Or even like when I was a kid, um, if someone was, if someone perceived me as gay or if someone perceived someone as gay, they'd have the same reaction. Yes. Whereas nowadays, if someone thinks I'm gay, it's like, oh, that's adorable, right? Or like, I, I, I thought one of my best friends was gay for a long time, and he's not. He just, he just loves Lululemon, right? <laughs> I'm totally on my shoe. Right? But like, like, people think he's gay all the time, but he's not offended by it. He just kind of laughs off and thinks it's hilarious. You know, on the inside, he might be like a little whatever, but like, it's, it's, very, it's very similar. I do see a lot of patterns with that between the trans community and the gay community when it comes to how cis people like react to them in certain ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I do like recognize that there has been, especially in the last like decade or so, being gay specifically has become more normalized. Like pride is fucking commercial as fuck now. Yeah. Which I don't know. There's a whole bunch of discourse about, did I ever sp speak to you about rainbow capitalism? No, please. Actually, maybe, but please. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth because I know exactly where you're going with this. I want you to go first and I'll, I'll go on my rainbow. To make after. sure you're not being offensive. Okay. No, I'm, so, I, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. So rainbow, rainbow capitalism is when companies 